trying to make sense of the gaming stories that matter the most. Pause your Gears of War co-op matches. Okay, put the controller aside because it's time for today's game break. <laughs> Here to discuss all things gaming, co-host of X-Play, the expert himself, Adam Sussler. How are you, sir? I'm doing all right. You? Good weekend of gaming. I had a great one. Pretty much, this is just, this is the only thing that's happening that's not involving Gears of War right now. All right, well, let's get into it. We're going to yeah. get to Gears, but I want to yeah. start first with something that Nolan Bushnell said. Recently, mm -hmm. he sat down with a media company, Red Herring, for an interview, and when asked about the PlayStation 3, the former president of Atari, I think he's the founder, had more than a, a few words of wisdom for Sony and its upcoming console launch. In the interview, Nolan Bushnell says, quote, Sony has shot themselves in the foot. There is a high probability they will fail. For years, Sony has been a very difficult company to deal with from a developer standpoint. Uh, this is Nolan Bushnell. Yeah, he also, I think as we're saying, called them arrogant and capricious. Uh, and he said that they could be that because they had such a huge installation base yeah. on PlayStation 2 that they could treat developers however they want. And Did that game change? Is this still the case with Sony? I'm afraid that Sony still behaves this way. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a lot of it. Just, you know, there, there, there's so much about what's happening now that's very similar to what happened at the launch of the PS2. Right. You have cutbacks on the number of... You know, all these big promises that don't seem to be delivered on. The big one being 400,000 down from 2 million is is, is, is very significant. Sure. I think like like the high cost, and it really does seem like that, that developers are getting some of the same difficulties that they had at the launch of the PS2. The PS2 launch was, was I remember hearing from a lot of developers that they were getting the support that they couldn't figure out how to work the architecture. They, well, they I mean, really even Microsoft couldn't wheel. get their game online because they're not they don't have the online library. I know. Is it's it Sony being rude and being arrogant as Bush and I would say, or is it they um, simply don't have their act together? I think there's two different ways. There are ways in the position that I'm in. I felt I have dealt with uh, Sony sort of arrogance that, that you know, there, there's, there's certain facets of the press out there that they would just not deal with. Right. Uh, though I think also it's a very big company. Mm -hmm. um, and we know that from the development of the PS2, and I imagine this is also similar for the PS3, you have, a Jap you have a Japanese and American division. Guess what? They're not always in agreement with one another. Sure. And it's just, it's that big and kind of unwieldy. Sometimes Sony America doesn't even know what yeah, elements are coming out of it. I mean, the, the idea is they're saying, we're like, oh, let's give those developers a hard time and make the product yeah. suffer. I don't think they're saying that. At the same time, I think that it's a large bureaucracy and they can't get the kind of support that I think some of the other game companies do offer. Alright, next up is the uh, general manager from EA Montreal. Okay, So he was, uh, while speaking about uh, at the panel at the Montreal Game Summit, oh. he shared his thoughts on the Xbox 360 and uh, the little title called Gears of War that we've been chatting about. He said he thinks Gears has been overrated and that the title is lacking in terms of any real innovation. So now, of course, gamers are up in arms, especially when it's an EA employee talking about lack of innovation. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's a monster yeah. 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 Uh, I mean, yeah. pot kettle black, or is he right? Is, is, is this true? Like, there's, there's uh, no innovation. Okay, I, I know one thing. Uh, Gears of War is hella fun. Yeah. Um, it's one of the best times I've had with the game. I do think, on some level, it's innovative. When you, when you take a step back, you're like, okay, I am kind of doing the same thing over and over again. Mm. But when you're in this, that thing you're doing in that it, moment, yes, and it's so well thought out. Um, I don't know. It depends what people consider to be innovation. Mm -hmm. It still has a lot of trappings with traditional games, which I think is fine. Um, I think what, I don't know what people keep on thinking that they want from innovation. I'm sure. In terms of the games, I think might break more boundaries. Uh, Bioware's Mass Effect is what I'm currently thinking might really be that right. one. But that, that, that's not. But with all that said, and very, very, very quickly here, it, is the chainsaw kill perhaps not the most satisfying way to defeat an enemy? <laughs> in any video game ever You created. know Ron Sell's going, oh, I should have thought of that one. <laughs> I would still have my job. He would, too. Yeah, the, the Chainsaw Kill, wow. The curb stomp. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, thank you for coming on and chatting video games. Folks, we will continue covering the hottest gaming stories every Monday right here on the Game Break. <laughs>